Well, good day, everybody. I'm really looking forward to this interview. It's a real gem of a one. We've got Neil Lappy, who's been at the top of our leaderboard for almost the entire time that I've known him. And uh, certainly in the last three years, many of us try and chase him down. So in this interview, we're going to go through a couple of questions and learn some secrets on how Neil has built a sustainable and uh, digital marketing business. So Neil, thanks very much for taking your time out today. It's always great, uh, you know, being able to talk to one another. You know, we meet each other in different cities all over the world today at yeah. some line. Yeah. Look, I know quite a lot about you, but let's say, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. You know, where you're operating from, uh, you know, from your business. Yeah. Well, we're located in Richmond, Virginia, and which is about, uh, it's about, um, maybe a hundred kilometers south of Washington, DC, uh, in the U S and, um, I'm a, uh, uh, I'm a father of two. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a husband of, uh, a woman I've been married to for 42 years Wow. and I have four grandchildren and, um, we have a very blessed life. It's really great. And um, I understand the grandchildren part. You know, we've also got, I think we've got five grandchildren and, uh, you know, we've got the kids, but uh, the fun really happens with them. Well, you know, you know, you know what they say, Francois, the, the reason grandchildren and grandparents get, get along so well is because they have a common enemy, <laughs> parents. Right? I haven't heard that one. That's a really good one. Yeah. <laughs> I always thought it was time to get back to your, to your children. So right. uh, tell me now, um, how did you leave uh, corporate America, you know, to consider moving into a business like uh, digital marketing? Yeah. Well, in, in my case, corporate America left me. Uh, I was with a, uh, I was with a company called Circuit City, a, a leader in consumer electronics in the U S right. and for about 18 years. And they started to have trouble uh, as Amazon and Costco and all the other competitors emerged. And so they had to start downsizing, ultimately went out of business, but uh, I was downsized in late 2003. Right. And uh, a wise person told me earlier in my career that if I've ever got into anything on my own, I should do something that's not fad. And so I felt the internet was probably not gonna go away, oh. and I should seek something that is, was associated with the internet. So I sought out uh, a variety of business opportunities, uh, after my uh, after my time at Circuit City, uh -huh. and came across WSI, and I felt uh, it was a very good fit for me. It was probably the best fit for me, all in all. And so I uh, I jumped in, and uh, 15 years later, uh, it's been it's far exceeded my expectations. So we've been in this together. I think we almost started in the same year, 15 years ago. We did. We and, did. And you know, and I took a very similar road where um, I think my shelf life ex <laughs> fat corporate just expired. So you yeah. had to, you know, do something on your own. And, and I must say, I, I looked at the internet pretty much in those days as new and I did a, a degree on, and, and I was just researching so much and I thought, well, you know, maybe this is something to try, but um, I didn't have anybody that influenced me. Did anybody influence you, you know, with regards to, you know, taking up a, a digital marketing agency? Yeah, that's a great question. I have to say that I, um, maybe my path was a bit unusual in that the, really the only influence I had was what I, what I just referenced. Right. Uh, really nothing beyond that. And, uh, you know, I was at a point of, um, of making a huge career transition, you know, from, uh, you know, from getting a paycheck every other week right. uh, in corporate America to doing the uh, doing one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life, and that is uh, start and create a successful business on my own. Right. So, um, you know, I came with no sales experience. I came with no marketing background, and I was a technical idiot. <laughs> so I brought nothing to the party, and. Um, my association with people like you and with WSI, uh, I was able to make it uh, successful. That's amazing what you can do uh, through the connectivity of the network. Yes. Um, you know, that's the real value. I mean, we've learned you know, from each other and 
And I mean, yeah. we'll talk about it a bit later. I mean, you are the top sales guy in our organization now, and you actually go around training consultants, which is, yes. you know, just goes to show you um, that an old dog can learn new tricks. <laughs> so pretty much yes. that way. So um, what's your typical work week? I know you've been easing out, but, uh, but I know our week's already busy. Sometimes it looks like we're having fun. Well, you know, for me, my typical work week is, is a little bit unique in that I've, uh, I've been able to uh, spin off another business from my digital marketing business. Right. I'm fortunate and blessed that I've been able to build a team uh, that is able to run the, um, the uh, WSI marketing business independent, independent from me. Uh -huh. So a uh, part of my week is involved in mentoring uh, the people that run the digital marketing business, uh, making sure that stays between the lines right. and uh, continuing to be relevant in the marketplace. Uh, in addition to that, I do a lot of uh, sales and leadership consulting uh -huh. with, um, with companies. I was doing that a lot with companies who were also our marketing um, customers. Right. And so uh, I continue to do that uh, uh, under a separate, uh, in a separate business in terms of helping them build their sales teams, helping them create strategic plans for the businesses and, uh, and, and help them uh, lead their business in a direction to be uh, successful and profitable. So, so my week is really a combination of, uh, I'm in front of clients all week, virtually every day, uh, and, and, and together with our um, uh, uh, digital marketing agency employees uh, frequently during the week. Yeah, one of the things you're describing now is, it's a good problem to have, it's to get to, you know, it's, it's to become successful, and um, you know, as you know, we are the business, uh, you know, really early on, and how do you, get a successor you know we start the business as small but we can build big teams and it looks like i know we've we've, we've had this discussion in the past but yeah. it looks like you've sort of found a model and also you know got people in your team that can run with it and your mentorship is what's keeping it together you know and i think it also it's very motivating yeah yeah well you know um uh, as is as is typical uh, for for most of the time, I was the primary rainmaker. I was the sales guy, uh, and also the leader. And uh, you know, as you said, Francois, you want to get to a point as part of your long term exit plan. You want to get to a point where uh, the business is not dependent on you anymore. So the first thing I had to do is I had to find a successor I, uh, for for myself uh, on the leadership side, and uh, I was you know, fortunate and blessed to be able to do that uh, about 10 years ago. And I've mentored somebody over the last 10 years uh, who is now running the marketing agency. Okay. Uh, so I replaced that part. Uh, the second challenge was to replace the sales capability that I had. Uh, and, uh, and so four years ago, four plus years ago, almost five years ago, uh, we um, started building a sales team. And so now um, I don't sell for the marketing agency anymore. Uh, I uh, somebody else runs it for me, you know. And so it is. It is an asset now. It's an asset now right. that I can sell on the marketplace um, as a complete whole entity fantastic. that is not dependent on me anymore. That's fantastic. Um, I had it slightly different, you know, I, I'm lucky I've got my daughter that's uh, running the right. business, but I need to replace myself as the salesperson. And thank goodness, you know, we had that long chat last October in Madrid and, uh, and you, you yeah. gave me some pointers. And I've got a sales guy now that, uh, you know, putting that effort in is starting to look uh, positive, you know. Excellent. So, uh, Excellent. I'm hoping, you know, learning from you in this instance, you know, that, um, you know, we can start working that three day work week, you know, that we're all looking for. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So you, you've had 15 years. What have the highlights been while you've been, well, while you still are at WSR because I know you've, you've had many achievements, but uh, you know, as you said, you brought nothing to the party, but you certainly had a party somewhere along the line. <laughs> so give us some of your highlights. Uh, then don't feel uh, shy about bragging about them either, Neil. 
Sure. Well, I would say I would say my first highlight is uh, the fact that I've been able to uh, double my income from corporate America and provide my family a lifestyle I never thought I could mm. provide them. Okay. Right. Um, another achievement, similarly, is I've been able to uh, create wealth uh, by creating, uh, by building and creating a business that is sellable in the marketplace uh, without me. Um, I've been able to uh, create a lifestyle that gives me a level of flexibility, allowing me to travel like you uh -huh. with my wife, to spend time with my grandchildren, and to, to have the level of flexibility that I never thought I would have in my life. Those are my biggest highlights. They really are. Uh, uh, you know, in addition to that, you know, I'm certainly proud of the fact that, um, you know, I've won several awards, you know, in the WSI network. Uh -huh. uh, we've won several awards, Web Marketing Association awards. Uh, and, um, and, and another highlight is that I've uh, uh, met some great people from all across the world, like you and others, uh, from whom I've learned, uh, from whom I have uh, made friends and can call at any point in the, in the day, in the week, and seek help. Uh, those are the highlights. Right. So what about being the top consultant for three years in the world? I mean, that's, a, that's such an achievement. And I know it's not something that, I, look, I strive for that. I've, I've got to number three on a few times, but um, the Americans are just too tough to beat sometimes from South Africa <laughs> with the dollars. But, um, you know, I know I get driven by that for my own um, personal success and benchmarking. Um, and, and you've stayed there. And, uh, and I think it's not just about getting there, it's staying there, but it says to me that you've got a sustainable income coming through. So, you know, you obviously maybe tell me a little bit about the recurring revenue that helps you achieve this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, a, that's a good question, Francois, and that's a big one. Uh, one of the things, um, you know, we started out 15 years ago as primarily a website development company. Right. Um, working on a project by project basis. And uh, I was a little bit slow, quite honestly, to get on to the recurring revenue um, theme. Um, but once we, uh, you know, once we started doing more marketing work uh -huh. and getting into things like search optimization and, and social media management and, and those kinds of things uh -huh. that are more of an ongoing thing rather than a, a website project. Right. Uh, we started to see the benefits of recurring revenue, uh, so much so that we, you know, I'm going to say maybe seven years ago or so, uh, that we made a conscious shift from getting away from projects and focusing com almost completely on recurring revenue. Right. Okay? And, so, uh, and so over the years, that has evolved to a point where uh, all we sell today are our ongoing retainer, recurring revenue, marketing services engagements. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't sell websites anymore. We do a few websites every year for existing clients. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that, that a, good, a good 97 to 98% of our revenue is recurring revenue every month. And the benefits of that are uh, incredible in that one, you know, every, you know, at the end of every month, at the beginning of every month, you know, I've got X amount of money coming in. That gives you some confidence and gives you some comfort. You, it, it also enables you to staff accordingly because you know how much demand you have in your business. So you can staff for it. Uh, and you can build a team based upon your projected revenue because you pretty much know what it's going to be. 
And so it makes for a more comfortable, um, less stressful, more predictable, and more profitable business. Um, and, and that's, um, and, and as, I've, as I've talked to you and others who are, you know, in the top of the network, what I hear consistently is the number one reason they were successful is they built a business on recurring revenue. Right. And, in, and, in, and in what we do, it's, it's relatively easy to do. Uh -huh. And you, you know, that's a great point, you know, for anybody watching this, this interview and video later, um, considering, you know, to start a business like, like a, a, an internet marketing franchise, is um, the moment you focus on the recurring revenue, um, you know, you're, you, you, just things seem to work out. You don't have to get up in the morning and go and sell something. And uh, so it's a, it's a trick you've got to learn early on uh, in, this, in this business. Um, otherwise, you get stuck in that project mode, you know, because some of these big projects can be time consuming. Um, obviously, you don't get the money coming in as quickly either. Right. So, so very good points. Now, yeah. you know, you know, it always sounds great and successful, you know, how we do it. But, you know, there are obstacles that we all face in our business uh, you know, and running them. And uh, I certainly, I know I have and, and, and the challenges that we've spoken about. And let me share a few of the things that uh, you struggled with, you know, in, in getting to where you are today. Well, you know, the biggest struggle uh, I, I tell people is has been and always will be uh, growth, sales growth. It's, it's lead generation and sales growth. And so uh, that was, uh, and, 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 the, and the good part about that, Francois, is, is if you think about it, that's what we provide to our clients. So there, you know, everybody, you know, all businesses want to grow and all businesses, uh, um, uh, whether they know it or not, need to grow their top line performance, their top line sales performance. So that is always a challenge. It's always a challenge. Uh, you know, when you're in a recurring revenue business, um, you know you're going to have attrition. You know you're going. You know you're going to have clients leave you for a variety of reasons. Some in your control, some out of your control. And so, um, so you have to constantly be uh, replacing those in order to grow. Um, so, so that's a constant challenge. And and uh, we've been. Uh, we have always, for 15 years, been focused on top line. Always. I, I, one, of my, one of my favorite sayings is, sales solves all problems. Okay. Um, and, but because it's so important, it, it, is, it, it remains, always remains a challenge. Okay. So that's a, that's a big one. Um, the second one is uh, finding good people. Oh. Uh, and... You know, uh, in order to have a successful, long-term, sustainable, profitable business, you have to build a culture. You have to build a culture that attracts the best people. Mm -hmm. And uh, in these days and times, particularly in the U.S., you know, the, uh, the, the, it, we're, we're virtually at full employment. So it's, sometimes it's challenging to find good people. But we've uh, remained steadfast in uh, making sure we keep the quality of our people high and provide a culture for them that uh, inspires them, helps them grow, and gives them a good work-life balance. Uh -huh. um, so that is a second challenge. And I, I think the third challenge would be um, finding the right uh, mix of fulfillment. And that is uh, those, you know, um, we're out selling and making promises. And so you have to have a team uh, to fulfill those promises in an exceptional way. And so uh, over the years, we have uh, struggled and experimented and changed a lot relative to how much of the work we do internally, how much we outsource. And, um, you know, that is, that is a uh, ongoing challenge because you want to maximize profitability while providing your customers an exceptional experience. And, and sometimes those are conflicting, you know, con conflicting objectives. Uh -huh. So um, continuing to find the right external suppliers uh, that have the right skill sets and the right methodologies and marry them up with your internal people 
is always a challenge in terms of um, providing your customers exceptional experiences and making money while you're doing it. Right, and um, I was fortunate to listen to one of your training sessions um, last year. And uh, besides being the sales guy, the one thing that uh, many of us took away um, was your focus on um, customer service and growth and that you, I think it's monthly that you actually check with your clients if they're satisfied in that. And I think, you know, there's something that some of us are maybe afraid to do, but you've stepped up and done it. And I think in this industry where sometimes SEO has a bad name, uh, you know, by giving this exceptional service has also got to contribute to your success. Well, you know, uh, um, we weren't always as confident as we are today. <laughs> um, uh, but, but we realized, and one of the things I've learned is the, uh, you know, unless you're in an industry that's being disrupted, you know, by technology, you know, like, uh, like an Airbnb or like an Uber or like an Amazon or something like that, uh, we're not being disrupted in that significant way in our, in our business. Right. And unless you're in a business that's being disrupted, the single most important thing you can do to create a successful, sustainable business uh -huh. is to provide your customers exceptional experiences. Right. And we, we also came to realize that what we don't know will hurt us in the marketplace. So if any, if any of our customers have any concerns about us, we want to know about them immediately right. so we can deal with them and fix them. Uh, because we don't want somebody out there saying uh, anything bad about us because that'll hurt our reputation in the marketplace. Right. And so that's what, you know, it's, it's really for those two reasons that we got pretty aggressive and pretty proactive mm -hmm. about reaching out to our customers to make sure we're okay. And, you know, building that reputation just goes, you know, so much further when we always relying on referral business as well, you know, so yeah. most of us, right. us this referral businesses are key to what we do. Yeah. So Neil, um, what do you think are the best skills that you bring to your business? I mean, you've already told me a lot of them, but uh, you know, you've got shortcomings and faults, but uh, the success parts that you bring. Well, I would say, I would say probably the, 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 the one of the top things is, uh, well, actually, two things I would say are at, at the top. One would be uh, my ability to solve business problems. Right. You know, when you tear it all down, we are in the business of solving business problems. We are in the business of interacting with fellow business owners, typically, uh, who have problems, and we all have problems in our businesses. Uh, and we're in the we're in the business of solving business problems. So one of the things that I have determined that I have a skill at uh, is to is to sit face to face with with peers and business owners right. and understand the challenges they're having, uh, kind of tear apart and analyze the problems, and then build back up solutions mm -hmm. uh, that work. Okay. Uh, whether they're marketing solutions, sales solutions, operational, whatever, uh, that's probably a skill set that I have. And, and again, you know, when you tear it all down, that is really the business we're in. Okay. Um, I'd say the second thing is I have a, um, I have a, I have a desire to see people reach their full potential. Uh, and that really is uh, directed at our employees. Uh -huh. It's, um, um, you know, I, I, I've been blessed over the years to have uh, a couple of good mentors and some good business experience in the corporate world, uh -huh. and I want to pay that back. Right. And so I want to do everything I can to help people reach their full potential and be the best versions of themselves. Yeah. And, and I do it sincerely, and I do it with passion, and as a result, uh, it's I think it inspires people. Uh -huh. And, and, and causes them to want to be part of something bigger than themselves. Oh, you're spot on. I think, um, you know, what I've noticed, and I've done a few of these interviews, but I just know even in myself and, and hanging around with guys like you, 
is we, we're really passionate about what we do. It's like it's part of our life, uh, a very big part of our life, and it's continuous, you know, continuous growth and, and goals. Um, that sort of brings me on to the next question is you've accomplished a lot. What are you looking at in the next, you know, 12 months? Because you, it seems like you start another business and, and you know, you want to balance your life. So what are you aiming for in the next 12 months? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm aiming to work less, although it's difficult for me. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, like you, we're so passionate about what we do. We like what we do. Yeah. Uh, it is our life. And to stop doing it is, in a way, to stop living. Uh, so, but, but nevertheless, um, I'm, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to work a little bit less. Um, I want to continue to, um, uh, mentor the marketing business, uh, to support their continued growth. Uh, -huh. uh, uh, at some point in the near future, I'm going to sell the marketing business. And, uh, and I want to make sure it's of greatest value. You know, when I sell, of course, that's part of my exit plan. Right. Um, you know, and, and frankly, uh, Francois, uh, I'd have to say uh, to continue to enjoy the life I've, I've, I've been able to create. Uh -huh. And what that means is, it, for me, and everybody's different, uh, a good combination of working hard and uh, helping other businesses grow and succeed uh -huh. while, um, while having the flexibility to travel the world right. with my wife. That's uh, good stuff. I mean, that's exactly um, where a lot of us aim for, you know, I mean, I've, 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 I've achieved that as well. And it's just been, right. you know, absolutely amazing. And uh, I think we've got the same goals, you know, how do we spend um, work maybe three days a week so we can spend more that time, you know, cruising right. around. So, um, right. you know, I sit with Mariana and we say, you know, let's just block out three days out of our diary and start like that, you know, don't try not to work. Yes. But uh, tell me about it when you're international <laughs> time zones and everything else. Right. <laughs> it all takes its way. That's so, right. Um, you know, we've sat and had, uh, you know, many evenings together, but as a new WSI consultant who's considering, you know, joining this business, what advice would you give them? Yeah. Um, let me think for a second. Uh, the, the advice I would give them, uh, you know, I guess it, it is as follows. One is, to um, be extremely active. Uh, don't sit back uh, uh, feeling like you need to learn everything. The, the best learning, the best teacher, as they say, is experience. Okay. And so I would encourage people uh, who, who come into this network, one, to get out there and experience reality uh, get out in front of customers, get out in front of clients, even though you don't know everything, you'll never know everything, quite honestly. Even though you're brand new, get out there because what you'll learn by interacting with uh, real people mm -hmm. is, uh, is will far exceed what you will learn sitting in your office reading a book right. or reading a manual. That's the first thing. The second thing I would advise them to, to do is to invest in invest in marketing. In particular, invest in uh, outbound calling for lead generation. Right. Invest in social selling for lead generation, uh -huh. and invest in networking in their communities uh, for lead generation. And to do it aggressively to maximize their selling time, right. um, because. You know, you, you want to get action going, you want to get things going, and you want to get revenue coming in the door. Mm -hmm. And once you get revenue coming in the door, uh, it takes some pressure off and gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility. Okay? Right. Um, 
I would also, it, it, you know, advise, advise the new people to leverage the network. We have some extraordinary people like you, like others who, uh, who have uh, walked the paths, who have made the mistakes, who have learned from those mistakes, yeah. and to leverage that network uh, to the greatest extent possible. Don't be shy about picking up a phone or, or sending an email or seeking out help because there's always somebody there who can help you, whether they're in Toronto at the home office or whether they're somewhere around the world like you or like me. Uh, what's remarkable, I think, is how helpful the people in the network are. Uh, I know, and, and you're the same way, we share it all. Right. You know, there are no secrets. Anything that I've done that I found success, I'm willing to tell anybody how to do it, you know? Um, but that's the benefit of being part of the network. So those are the, those, that's probably the advice I'd give. Yeah. Well, you make a, you know, you, two points uh, pick up there, and, and this is with my first mentors as well. Um, they said, get out there and find your voice. You know, I don't know whether it was an American saying, it was find your voice. And I said, what do you mean? Well, it's like talk about your business, you know? So if you're not out there talking about the business and feeling comfortable, um, yeah. you'll just be behind, you know, with it. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's really key, you know, to do that. Um, the second point, which many people, when they join this, uh, this network, they feel that maybe we are competitors to one another, and yet mm. we are completely the opposite. You know, even though we can, That's right. we, can we, we somehow don't steal each other's business, we normally collaborate right. to get for bigger deals, and uh, we're willing to share our experiences. And that's just an amazing thing that, um, if you are going to invest in something like this, that if you don't use the network, okay. then I think you, you know, you are not doing yourself the, the right service, you know, in that way. Yeah. 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 And, you know, to your point, I, um, uh, I have, there's a, there's another WSI person about five miles away from me, you know, very close. And in the last, I'm going to say 10 years, we've probably, had a conflict with maybe two opportunities, right. you know, and whoever was the first there got it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he helps me, I help him. There's so much business out there that it, you don't have to worry about the competition. You, know, you don't have to worry about competing with other WSI people. Right. It's just so much business out there. So that's, so, so you're right. It's, yeah. it's just the opposite. Perfect. Now, Neil, um, what is your, personal motto, what would that be if you were going to give us something to remember this interview by? Only the paranoid survive. <laughs> Only the paranoid. So you're admitting there's a bit of madness about you, is there? <laughs> well, you know, I've come to realize, Francois, that, that, that the moment you feel like you figured it all out is the first day to the end. Right. You know, because things change so fast. Um, uh, you know, you always, I always feel like I need to be worried about remaining relevant, right. worried about how we're going to grow, worried about how we're going to serve our customers, worried about how we're going to inspire our people. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, what I've learned again is, is, is the minute, the minute you stop, worrying about those things is it's the beginning of the end right so only the paranoid survive only the paranoid survive so if we were going to go to happy hour i know what you're going to order but what would that be <laughs> jack, uh, jack daniels and diet coke there we go jack daniels and diet coke it's, and and we've done a few jacks all over the world you and me yes we have <laughs> so so yes, it's, really, it's really great. And um, I mean, not that we drink too much, but it's, it's, it's always something that's been amazing. How we yes. pick up. So, uh, Neil, I really appreciate you uh, taking this time out. You know, it's really, you know, we're all busy, but, you know, once again, it's all about contributing and, and, and sharing. So you've spent this time with me, but if you could be anywhere else <laughs> than talking to me right now, where would you want to be? Um, well, I just came back from Jamaica all, all last week. So, um, you know, I, I, I got, I got a good amount of that. Quite frankly, 
one of two places, either, either with my wife in a tropical place right. or in front of one of my clients, helping them figure out big problems. Wow. Okay. Now that's something different that I didn't expect. You know, I could understand, you know, like I've just been on a walk on the beach for two hours today and that's, you know, it's been my highlight, but, uh, I wasn't thinking I wanted to be in front of a client rod <laughs> today, but, uh, uh, but it is, I think there are times that, uh, you know, you, you work through something and I think what helps is if you're successful in your own business, it rubs off, you know, onto your clients no question. and they feel, okay, this is, this is it. You know, I can work with somebody that can, you know, be my partner. So it's been yeah. really great. Yeah. yeah. So Neil, um, thanks very much um, for sharing your story with, with us and with me today. I mean, it's really inspiring, you know, for all of us to, to see just your, your progress. I mean, I've been around 15 years as you have, and, it's been amazing to watch, uh, you know, your success and, and many other successes, you know, in the network. And um, I really, uh, you know, enjoyed this time today. And I'm looking forward to seeing you probably in Cancun a little bit later yes. this yes. year uh, where we can carry on and picking up. So, you know, once again, thank you so much for all your time and effort. And uh, I look forward to sharing this interview with everybody that's interested in knowing about right. your success. Francois, you're a, you're a gift. Uh, thank you. You're a good friend. And uh, I thank you so much for, for your interest in time as well. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Well, send my regards to Peggy. I hope everything is, uh, is all good. I know she had a broken leg for a while and uh, yeah. you probably fixed that up walking the beaches of Jamaica this time. Yes. And yes. Uh, we'll see you soon. So thanks so much, uh, Neil. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks, Francois. See you. Bye. Well, good day, everybody. It's really exciting time for me today because I'm